What's going on, beautiful people? It's your boy, Mr. Meyer, with the fire, here to share ideas and take the collective vibration higher. And my sole intention is to reconcile all paradox with love and truth. I love you. And this is a special video, Mars Day with Mark 15. Sit back, relax. This is the week's astrology. I'm gonna break it down collectively and subjectively. And what that means truly is that we all have access to this energy and what you do with it is what you do with it. I can only express this energy through my own subjective and personal lens, try to make it as applicable and as logical and universal as possible, but just take what resonates and ask your guides to guide you through this guidance. So that's some kind of meta, but I just want to say that's very important because we all experience this stuff differently. And I know most of y'all are empaths and I'm an empath and this shadow work's been hitting me like a truck. So I just want to say my intention is to make this video be for the best and highest good of all and keep my spirit light, keep it high vibrational because I am dealing with a lot of healing and I'm not alone in that. And if you are right there with me, I want to send you power, love, prosperity, and peace on the journey and encourage everybody to just fight for love. Keep that damn heart open, man. Whatever that means, whatever you got to fucking do to keep that heart open, whatever you got to do to overcome your battles, everything you do in the name of love will be worth it. I promise you. So let's talk about the astrology. I'm going to show you the chart for the week. This is the astrology of mm, almost in November, <laughs> September 19th to September 26th. Uh, Tuesday to Tuesday, Mars Day to Mars Day. So this is as I'm filming it right now. Ignore the houses, ignore the clock face because this is my geography. One week from now, on the 26th, you see some changes. So I'm gonna run you through it, man. It's crazy because half of our planets are retrograde right now, guys. And that's just gonna mean that there's not much forward momentum, not much action moving. Things are changing and I'll tell you about them. And I see the nature of the slower moving outer planets being retrograde reflecting us to be more aware of ourself things are getting kind of personal right now and let's talk about it as i'm filming this the sun is at 26 virgo so shout out to my virgos that means at the end of the week the sun is going to be at three libra so we're going through a seasonal transition not only is the sun switching constellations and signs it's actually going into a whole nother season. It's a whole new cardinal sign. So if you're on the top of the earth, not to say that one side is the top or the bottom, but if you're in the Northern hemisphere, you will see that we're moving into fall. And if you go into the Southern hemisphere, we're moving into spring. So that's cool, man. You know, really what this means, if we want to go globally, is cuffing season, man. It's about to be time for relationships to be the theme for love to be the theme, for, one more time, for love to be the theme, beauty as well, to be on the spotlight, you know? And I encourage nobody to compromise their own integrity, sense of beauty, or love for anything going on outside, even a relationship. I'm trying to blow down this tree like a lumberjack, for real. Y'all feel me? Pause for the cause, man. Pause for the healing. I consecrated this one with the energy of Ceres and Virgo. <coughs> I lied to y'all. Ceres and Scorpio. Why not both? Apparently, I had to just let it out. To heal the mother issues, man. For real. Good Lord. I don't gotta bore y'all or sadden y'all with a long trauma dump. But that's what my experience has been lately, dude. Is just ungodly amount of mom issues repressed memories on that boxes i couldn't open till i got old enough and i'm like oh fuck so yeah we grow through what we go through man healing the past my reiki healers know yo <laughs> make sure you're chanting your mantras it's way it's way more important what comes out of your mouth than what comes into your mouth But just understanding this tra it's, this transition, this seasonal change, is going to be about solidifying whatever you were putting down during Virgo season, keeping your habits and structure and schedule organized so that you can really maintain and cre create and maintain that peace. 
create it and maintain it too. That's what Libra is all about is the scales, justice, reciprocity. Does your life make sense? Does it feel good? <clears throat> I'll drink to that, man. Water element, why not? Collective message to ground and drink more water. But I said, fuck it, I'm going to drink first. I'm going to lead by example. You know, so y'all can't tell me that I'm just telling y'all to do things I won't do. You better drink that damn water. You better open that root chakra. Because uh, I was asking Spirit the other day on a TikTok live. I was like, Spirit, what is our real collective responsibilities? What is what is the thing that we should all be doing as people to uphold our end of the bargain? And what I got was open that damn root chakra. So I say again, you know, it's really healing in general to move forward. So to speak, like your traumas and pains might not necessarily be your fault, but your healing is your responsibility. So the way we start is from the ground up and that's root chakra. We work on balancing the spine with our posture and feeling grounded and safe in the planet and really staying in our power. And there's something to be said about the power of love with these two cards right here. Is that it's actually way more powerful to love than to hate. At some point we have to decide that it doesn't have to be a fight. Mars is in Libra as well. So I just want to say that the spotlight is going to be on Mars pretty soon. This is something to think about, guys. I'm trying to prepare y'all for the energies. Um, not to say that I have everything figured out or that we can really prepare for things ahead of time because time has to pass. But one thing to think about about this Libra season specifically is Mars is already sitting his ass in that sign. So that's going to mean the sun is going to cross over Mars and we're all going to be face to face with our aggression and our anger and our power. And what we do with it, that's a whole other story. But, you know, and justice for all and love and peace and peace. I wish peace on everybody. So we are going to be seeing this seasonal change on the 23rd. <clears throat> and I just want to say that you'll notice that not only are relationships going to become more important for you, beauty and the aesthetics and you know, style and taste and music, it's all going to be a little bit more important, but also your sense of justice and idealism as well. Because we are all in a relationship with the world. And I think that's one relationship that gets a little overlooked when we talk about Libra is that there's a relationship with you, other people, the world itself, your ideas of the world, even different parts of yourself you're going to have a relationship with. So I'm going to put this down in one sec. But also the moon is waxing this week. So we're starting with the Scorpio moon and we'll be ending with the Aquarius moon at the end of the week next Tuesday. But one thing I want to talk about when it comes to the moon is waxing means seed planting and taking a line action and just making sure that you're following through with the goals that you're setting. But when it comes to the moon, you also need to keep in mind the lunar nodes and the axis between the lunar nodes. And the north node is in the sign of Aries. And the south node is in Libra. And I want to show you guys as I say this. But the nodes are always going to be in opposition in the chart. Because they're a mathematical calculation. So we've got Aries up here and we've got Libra down here. And we've got Mars already there in the sign. So basically, what we're all learning at this time collectively with the north node and Aries is creative self-expression and really acting out impulse, just truly going after things without thinking, which is somewhat, somewhat of a weird idea because humans blessed with intellect are always gonna have choice on some level, which means thinking, you know, deciding something based on a, a whole multitude of factors. But this is gonna say to, of course, use that rationality, use that empathy you have for everybody and yourself, but to be more trusting in your actual self and your impulses, your power. That's what this energy is really about. And with Mars, the depositor of Aries in the sign of Libra, you gotta think about this already, is that on top of what I just said, the way all of us are even receiving new Mars energy right now with Mars and Libra is intellectually, it's air, it's Libra. Meaning before any of us act out our impulses right now with Mars and Libra, we're automatically filtering it through a collective or universal or a relationship point of view, idealistic or with a person, with that intellectual empathy. So it's like, 
if your actions make sense, if your direction makes sense to you on some level, or really if it's just not aimed at harming a bunch of people or anybody else, do what you want to do, man. That's kind of the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have done to yourself. And if you're kind of confused about what you need, just don't go out of your way to harm others. And it's really that fucking simple. That's really the, the thing about Mars and Libra. I'm speaking from my heart. Mars is transiting my moon right now. Like, dude, just be a good fucking person. Just don't go out of your way to do, do, do shitty things. And life will generally protect you. But also at the same time, like, there's so much to... Yeah, I just... Oh, I read from the heart, man. So it's like, there's so much to be said. You see me twitching, man. I swear that's an involuntary reaction. Like, there's so much to be said about the danger of empathy, though, because... You know, when you consider others without considering yourself, you can really put yourself in harm's way. And some people do see kindness as weakness and will exploit that. So understand that. And don't take any shit, man. Evil needs to be destroyed. And I know I've, I'm sorry to anybody I've hurt with the message that I said, evil destroys itself. While that's true on some levels, sometimes you have to destroy evil your motherfucking self. Because they would rather destroy other things. That's why it becomes evil and destructive. It's so fucked, man. But it's like, you have to fight for yourself. You have to fight for yourself. You have to fight for yourself. This message is loud as fuck right now. Fight for yourself. Some of y'all would rather... Me too, man. On my Libra moon, man. Never want to fight a day in your life. Because why the fuck is there a need to fight? There is no need to fight. But on some level, violence and malevolence exists in this world. And you have to fight against it lest you want to be destroyed by it. And that's the cold truth. That's the three of swords in my own heart right now. Whew. That's in my spirit right now, allegedly, <laughs> says the cards. Ooh, I feel my foot twitching on my Jupiter Pisces, bro. It's crazy. So it's like, I'm looking at the broad overview of my notes right now, guys. And what I'm seeing is like, damn near all of it is retrograde. The planets, two of the planets that are not retrograde, which is Venus and Mercury, those are going through post shadows right now. So like I had mentioned earlier, it's just like there's a lot of personal reflection and introspection going on at this time in the collective. And also when I when I think about these uh, outer planets in retrograde, bro, it's like these feel like really big structures toppling down in a very confusing way. And I'll break you down, break down the aspects for you and show you this week a little bit more because I got more info, but yeah. It just, this is an interesting week, y'all. I hope y'all are good because um, emotionally, it's high, it's high amplitude on my end. I don't know what y'all are feeling. I'm just gonna, like, I'm being real Libra Moon about it. I'm like, this is, <laughs> this is what I'm feeling. <laughs> you know, your inner world where you can usually create landscapes and enjoy and, and anything. Like, bro, it's like this kind of... <laughs> I don't know what y'all feel, but like, hey. <laughs> well, I know my tree is upside down right now, but it's all right. <laughs> it's all right, dude. That's part of the game. That's perspective for for, for your ass. Spirit's got us all. So I'm feeling good, and I hope that... Well, no, I'm, I just lied to your ass, right to your face. I, I feel really like a hope and an excitement but honestly like there's there's strong change in my emotions not to say that i don't feel good all the time but um or sometimes but yeah and healing kind of fucks with your neurology as well so i want to call that out as well i know um it's not that i need to explain this to justify this to myself but to, to make a point and draw some attention to everybody in the collective like you got to understand that there's a there's a spiritual dimension to life so trauma actually affects our spirit on some level and that's not a good or bad thing but the thing i'm trying to tell you is that the consequence of it means that as you are going through life after it you will have to do a little bit of spiritual work to bring your awareness back into the present so you can actually have better mental health emotional health physical health confirmation so it's like this is why people have ADHD and ADD. Not all of them. A lot of them have just trauma where they have a hard time being present, dissociating and shit like that too because it's just, it's a defense mechanism from the spirit. It's very useful, very genius if you think about it. Same way where I'm like grateful 
that my spirit was able to repress a memory of some fucked up shit that happened in my childhood until I became old enough to get healing tools and awareness and strength to be able to do something about this stuff. It's like divine timing is the thing. And also one thing I learned, which is really cool, I'm just gonna speak about it, man, is uh, we all have spirit guides. Truly, everybody has spirit guides and there's many different types of guides and there's actually guides that will guard your consciousness. So you evolve. All the spirit guides are qualified for your evolution. So they will make sure information doesn't come into your perception when it's not the right time. So not only does your soul slash mind slash human hardware have the intelligence to repress certain experiences. Um, spirit has that ability, which is really cool. I mean, why wouldn't it? Right. You know, think about it. Where the fuck do we come from? So let's uh, let's let's keep going. Let's break it down. Like I said, Mercury post shadow. So uh, we, we're already excited for the Libra energy and represent Libra. Let me know who's got the Libra planets, who's got the Libra sun. I'm a Libra moon, I told y'all, but my moon is scary close to black moon Lilith. It's in a conjunction junction. I also got Juno in Libra. I might have more asteroids, but that's really what I've seen in my Libra constellation. But what about you? I want to know. Let me know what's going on with your Libra. <laughs> You got Mars transiting Libra. So before I go into uh, Mercury, I'm just gonna say the thing about Libra is just like the same energy that we're about to be just experiencing ourselves through. We're gonna be going through. We're already using our passions this way, our energy, our our willpower. And I think you saw that shit full circle whenever I mentioned that you have to fight evil for real. Mars has to fight something. It would rather be in like Aries and Scorpio to just go after something that made sense or not think about what you're going after. But the challenge with Mars and Libra is these ethical, moral conflicts and dilemmas. So I know a lot of people still have problems and issues with fighting evil, but I just wanna say that on some level, you need to see that as an ethical responsibility. And this is why a lot of, I'm, my spirit's known this, and this is why some people feel like I'm way too hostile about my spirituality. And maybe that's true, but either way, it go, I, maybe it's true, maybe it's not. I don't really care, to be quite honest. But what we aren't changing, we're choosing. So we have to make a choice. If you want to serve the greater good, be a part of the good fight, you have to identify the enemy. You need to be able to determine that which requires severance for evolution to continue. And some people will still be bothered with the idea of looking at it evil and facing it and trying to destroy it. So I just want to remind you that evolution exists in all things. So if you guide yourself by principle, you will see yourself as exemplary in will and character through all of your actions. And if you recognize the need for self-preservation as the number one priority, you would probably not be bothered so much from defending yourself. So I hope that helps somebody because I know how fucking hard it is to have empathy for others and not want to participate in the fight at all. To be punished in a fight that you never wanted any parts to be in. That's terrible. Because it feels like a waste of energy off the rip. And it is. But at the same time, it's even more wasteful to just take it. And I'm sorry to anybody going through this shit, man. Because it's awful. Like, violence has been a thing for a minute. So just gain power gain power gain power and ask for help from spirit and your friends and everybody you know you can you got to trust that there is support in the world as well but you got to have your own back first and foremost that's really the deepest message so yeah that's that's the cold mars energy that we're feeling and I've got Mercury at nine degrees of Virgo, and it's going to be at 16 Virgo at the end of the week. And that's just going to say that the mind is working as it should. And that's a weird thing to say, but Mercury is home in Virgo. Mercury is how we think and perceive, and that's an earth sign, and it's mutable. And that's just really careful, systematic, procedural, logical, deductive. And I think on some level, subtractive is a really good word for Mercury Virgo because it can pick things apart and it can reduce and it can simplify. And that's really a, a great way to think, a great way to analyze, a great way to plan. 
So I encourage everybody to think more and do less right now, especially with Mercury being through this post shadow, meaning it's not quite done with retrograde motion. Even though it's moving the right direction, it's still picking up the, the pace from where it left off or where it went backwards, basically. So we're catching up and that just says that like, you know, your ability to function, because that's third house, like broadly speaking, to interact with the world, to communicate and even be able to like use your motor functions, that's Mercury. This might not be as fast as it normally is. So this is just a good time for mindfulness and, and meditation and centering, connecting with your damn self. Centering is really the best word I could give you. Just centering and centering and centering. Paying, like it's so meta, but paying more attention to your perception. And that in itself opens up a whole world of possibilities because you automatically avoid all this interference. That's something to think about. So Venus is also going to fuck through it, my friends. And that's, that's somewhat because of Mars being in her domicile you feel me i know you feel it it just is what it is so on another note venus is going through her her post shadow her postpartum depression is damn near what it feels like for real like it's post shadow it's darkness it's underworld vibes no joke like venus does a 40-day retrograde and under that notion that's like christ walking through the desert uh that's like Anana descending in the underworld. It's crazy, man. It's like, where is the sun? Especially with Venus and Leo, because Venus is how we love. Venus is how we appreciate. And, and Leo is about life itself and joy and celebration and fun and amusement and your sense of self as well. Oh, my God. Let's not forget that. So <laughs> I know me, but I know that a lot of people as well have been into deep shadow work through these last uh, couple months with the Venus energy because of their relationships and their need to dive deeper into their love of self or expose any, you know, self-hating or self-destructive energies that they find within themselves as well. So that's been a real big issue as well that we're dealing with on the collective. And another thing is that Black Moon Lilith, I wanted to talk about this earlier, but I guess I needed to build up to it and build around to it. But Black Moon Lilith has been in the sign of Leo as well. And this is very serious. She's almost done in two weeks from now, my friends. Black Moon Lilith will be in the sign of Virgo. And Lilith is the apogee of the moon. And that means basically while the moon orbits the earth, this is the furthest the moon can be from the earth. Furthest geometrically and in the furthest distance, basically. And the moon is our feelings, it's our emotions, it's how we find comfort and security. And it's really that instinctive and magical and damn near unconscious or subconscious part of our mind that connects us with the energy of, of, of life, safety, nourishment. It's our mother, it's our inner world, you know? And the sun is your solar. And one of your, one of your eyes is the moon and one of your eyes is the sun. I can't remember which is which because it's different for men and women, but... You know, one, one is going to correspond to one and the other, the other. If anybody knows, let me know. It's like, I have to look through my notes because I learned that shit in school. But you can see that in real life, literally. I know that might sound weird. It's a little esoteric, but it is true. But the moon also, it, it's the containers in your body. A lot of things that the moon is. But the, the moon Lilith energy, just the logic of this, the correspondence of it says that the moon or Black Moon Lilith, I should say, which is in Leo right now. She's really representing the deep needs that we have, even the needs that we repress or hide from, not just on a personal, but a collective level. So if you were to watch the transit of Black Moon Lilith, you would really be able to see the shadow work before it's coming, which is really crazy. So the whole chapter of Lilith Leo has been repressed shame anger guilt and resentment which are kind of like two synonyms of each other but yeah it's like jealousy is the word as well like possessiveness leo is also going to represent our ability to create so it's important to have some form of self-expression nowadays no joke I'm not even kidding. I wish I could put that in bold face letters and, and make it more dramatic. But yeah, having a form of self-expression is going to be imperative now 
to be able to really have a higher self-esteem and to really get through some of the, the complex emotions that we're going to be finding at this time. To be able to identify yourself with something beautiful or fun or even just your own unique talents that come into life. Leo talks about the need for self-acceptance and respect, but also a, a recognition, which often can come from others, and it feels good to get it from others, but this energy says, dude, you have to do everything in your power to make sure that you only need your love, recognition, and respect, because I'm telling you guys, in two weeks, Lilith will move into Virgo, and she'll be there for over nine months. I'm pretty sure it's about nine months. Yeah, it's nine months. And... Um, Lilith and Virgo is going to talk about, you know, creating amazing health. Truly, that's the best thing about it is creating amazing health, Lilith and Virgo. And honestly, truly understanding your work, finding a deep peace, knowing your place in the world, not having any enemies, being protected, being secure in your life. Yeah, being so protected and so focused and so enmeshed in your life and your purpose that you have no worries. Lilith and Virgo is profound peace, but do understand that that's the good part, you know? So how do we get there? It's going to be a lot of bullshit. And I'm just telling y'all, preparing y'all not to be a doomer because I'm telling y'all the best thing what we're going to get out of it. But this is going to say that we got to go to the depths of our sixth house pretty soon for about nine months so this is really about time to start working on the sacral or get some habits that are going to help you open up the sacral chakra and balance that energy within yourself and the the big one i think it's really anger when it comes to leo but when it comes to virgo the big one is really going to be guilt to release in the collective is to forgive your goddamn self and forgive other people as well the challenge is really to forgive goddamn everybody that's the goalpost is that if you are the universe you are all that is all that will ever be because you are everything so at some point we must forgive everything to rise up to to elevate our consciousness and this is the complicated message because a lot of us have been hit we've known that and our empathy tells us that but at the same time it's like you have to remember the creation and co-creation that is your being and use that damn Mars energy to destroy the right things. That's leadership. That is making right choices. That's modeling good decisions for other people because we cannot turn a blind eye to corruption. We cannot turn a blind eye to negligence. We cannot turn a blind eye to malign force. We just can't do it. We just can't do it, man. Everybody makes mistakes, but we got to come together. And, and that, that comes from you coming together with self. For real. All right? Because there is no we without you. That's what it means. You can only have a we if it's two whole people. And the way you find a whole person is by being whole yourself. Being whole will give you the abundance you need to share that with the world. Some people just need to rise up and be brave. Because they think fear needs to be gone for them to do something. No, fear has to be there for you to be brave. So some people just need to be brave. You couldn't be brave without fear. This shit is not easy, but it's worth it. It'd be a lot harder to, to fall short, quite honestly, and to not even try. So I feel like a lot of people got to make decisions on earth. I know this is a little bit more out there, but hey. I see a lot of people gave the fuck up, man. And I totally understand, but this is the wake up call. To get back in the fucking fight and commit to your life and really not retreat from this bullshit, man. Recognize that life is eternal. So if you're in a reality with fuckery and bullshit and corruption, you might be here to fix it or enact some change on it. And if you don't change it, you're choosing to accept it. And let's not fucking do that, man. Don't forget y'all having power is what this Virgo season has been about. Is that if you haven't been using your daily rituals, those 24 hours we all have to move your life forward, you kind of just suck, quite honestly. We all have the same resources, man. So if you're not moving forward, that's your fucking fault. That's the absolute truth. And 
I'm sorry that some of my followers got to hear that. But you have to fucking hear it and take it to your soul and understand that's negligence on your responsibilities in the collective. And God is not loving you, bitch, about the problems you create for yourself. And you only need to feel your personal shame. You don't got to feel anybody else's, man. You know, your conscience will guide your actions and just stay clean. That's all I got to say. It's just stay clean, man. It's not easy on earth. And we are going to make mistakes, but you have to forgive yourself to clean back up. Vesta and cancer open that goddamn heart. This shit is not easy, man. You're going to be the hardest person to forgive nine times out of ten. If you resonate with my content, my channel, my spirit, because I know you got a deep love and empathy for goddamn everything. <laughs> so when you make mistakes, that's the hardest because you're like, fuck, dude, how dare I? How could I? What is absolutely wrong with me? Maybe deep down, Lilith and Virgo says there's actually nothing fucking wrong with you. That's the meaning of these next nine months is a hey, there's literally nothing fucking wrong with you. We're all human. We're all disgusting. We're all beautiful and perfect. It goes no motherfucking further than that. That's all it is. Life is hard. Do your best to stay hard and make it easier. God damn it. <laughs> like, come on, man. We got to put pressure on systems, not on ourselves, And we got to take time out of our day to build and maintain these systems for fuck's sake. I love y'all so much. So if you resonate, thanks for letting me coach you for a sec. I'm just paying it forward, man. The people who pulled me up the ladder. Saturn, it's motherfucking work, man. You gotta understand. The structure has integrity. So that's why it's maintaining. <clears throat> that's why they can come down to you and you can receive that knowledge as well. It's awesome. But that just says the value of work as well, man. You can't neglect the work. You get out what you put in, so don't ever forget about that, okay? So I don't feel like I just want to be preaching, but um, this is a very powerful week, guys. I just want to say a very, very powerful week, and let me tell you why. Is that as the sun is going through the last part of Virgo, it's going to be making a trine with Pluto and Capricorn, about a 120-degree angle. And bada-boom, bada-bing, what's that mean? That's a gift of transformation, of transforming your goddamn self, your sun. So, hey, take it from somebody with Sun Triumph Pluto. This is going to be a real depth of insight into your character. Shit might get real this week, <laughs> you know. This might be a really empowering week for your character development. You might see some really crazy things happen when it comes to the perception of yourself, but also the meaning of your life this fucking week with the Sun Triumph Pluto. So I just want to say, hey, 333, as I said that shit, man, this is going to be an amazing week. I promise you that. <laughs> if you're watching this, this is a spell. This is a ritual in itself, this video. Yeah, bro, it's going down. <laughs> yeah. Did you see my Pisces go Jupiter? Or my Jupiter go Pisces right there? Where I had that look on my face? Yeah, dude, I'm telling you. If you saw it, you know what I mean, bro. On my Saturn Taurus, bro. Like, this shit's real. Blessings on blessings on blessings. So, uh, the Sun Trine Pluto. That's being unconsciously led towards important issues and really transforming yourself in any circumstance through the sheer depth, the depth of your fucking focus. Bro, sis, ma'am, sir, zim, zir, bim, bob, jimmy, John, johns, it's going down. <laughs> I don't know what to call you. Drop your pronouns in the chat, you know? <laughs> but, uh, hey, divine one, it's going down, and we about to change some things for the better. <laughs> I'm telling you. That's 512, yeah. About to break cycles, create new ones. I'm telling you, man. Like you might not be conscious, you might not even be consciously aware of this shit happening. That's the crazy thing about this sunshine Pluto. I love it. But I also I, I peep this, guys. That uh, on the 24th, the sun is going to be going in conjunct Saturn. All right. Like right after the sun is going to make a 150 degree angle with Saturn because Saturn's in Pisces at about one degree. <clears throat> And the sun will be at one Libra. So that's about 150. And this shit is mad confusing. This is tense. We might get that rebirth from Pluto. But then it's like, now what the fuck do I do with it? You know, there might. It, this sun 
aspect with Saturn feels really restricting on yourself. And I just want to say collectively, like re resist the urge this week to be hard on your damn self, heavy on that forgiveness and positive reinforcement and self-esteem building and affirmations and mirror talk and self-care and self-love. That's really powerful. And, you know, heavy also on not taking things personally from others as well. You know, trying to recognize when people might be overstepping your boundaries, but still love them through their brokenness, confusion, or malign force. You can look at an evil person and be like, you're absolutely evil and I won't tolerate you and I will cut you off and we might fight for real, but uh, I love your spirit because you are the universe misdirecting this fucking energy. Still love you, but I'll destroy your ass if I ever saw you, bitch. Like, it's, it's, it's a weird energy, guys. It's a weird energy, but some of y'all feel me, man. And we healing. Take no shit. On my seventh house, Jupiter, man. You get what you give. So sometimes you got to teach people reciprocity. That's really what it is. I'm trying to tell y'all, man. You are the universe. So you uphold divine law. Think about it. So you have to teach people divine law through their interactions with you. Reciprocity. Sometimes if you don't give people what they give you, you fuck up. Ever think about that? Hmm. Just something to think about, man. It's like, you know, as all these are as ideas. But I hope that rocked somebody out of cognitive dissonance for real, because that's why I said it. it was like, wake. Some of y'all still need to wake the fuck up. But hey, you know, each one teach one, man. I mean, it's all circumstantial, but Libra season is going to be a good one, I feel. Because uh, let me say this really quick, because there's so much to say about this Libra season. So I'm so glad you're watching this and we'll talk about it as we go, of course, but you got to think about the depositors of any sign or the ruler of any sign that's being activated. And when it comes to this goddamn Libra season, Venus is still fucked up right now, y'all. Like, I'm just keeping it a hundred with y'all. Some people are like, I don't want to be a doomer gloomer. But some people are way too happy, go lucky, positive, positive. It's like, hey, we got to fucking just call this shit for what it is. But also it's like, I understand the subjectivity, objectivity thing is weird. But um, one thing I'm noticing and I'm going to show you about this Venus energy, you know, there is that Lilith thing. So there's like pressure building from the unconscious bubbling up that we need to be dealing with, you know, and that automatically is going to say that, um, we're going to be called for attention and approval from other people to make us feel special. That's already happening. But when you look at Juno, which is the asteroid of romantic relationships between Venus and Lilith, that says that our actual needs right now are reflecting romantic love. But there's also repressed emotion that needs to be dealt with at the same fucking time. So there's these genuine needs that are calling out and beckoning. But at the same time, there needs to be energy redirected back into healing and self-approval and self-respect. So it's like, you got to balance these two energies, man. I recommend the celibacy in the last one. So it's like, if that if that works for you, that's the thing to do. But at the same time, it's like, you just got to, with the energy of Leo, you got to be very intentional with these damn relationships that you're forming and choosing to participate in. It has to be intentional, it has to be principled, and it has to make sense. Oh, God damn. So right now, one more thing I want to say also, I don't think I got to explain it too deeply for real after everything we've already talked about, but Lilith and Pluto are making that 150 right now, that in conjunct angle. And really that is a sort of collective mass confusion because these are both planets that work mostly unconsciously. And this is a confusing angle anyway. And the angle's confusing mostly just because any inconjunct signs are going to have different uh, element, different modality, different duplicity. So there's a lot of shifting coming in very abruptly from unconscious forces, unconscious destruction, separating from the world painfully, becoming whole within yourself and whole within the universe. So I just want to say... I can't be the only one who feels like their life is ending because it's being reborn. <laughs> if y'all feel me, let me the fuck know because um, I'm like, hello, I got a fucking Libra Lilith. Sometimes I'm like, am I really the only person alive, man? 
It's cold in the D. It's it's uh it's lonely out here for real, man. But I think the message here is that your ancestors know what it's been like. Your spirit guides know what it's like. And also, you know what it's like. And deeper than that, if you find yourself in a space to connect, you might find that other people even know what it's like as well. Yeah, you'd be naive to think you're the only person going through some shit for real. You know, but remember that destruction is part of transformation. And this is a painful truth to accept. But it has to be accepted nonetheless. So I just need to throw that out there. Gently just understand that. There is going to be a need for destruction to be reborn into a better and bigger form. Oh yeah. And let every breath be a cleansing breath. Let every breath be a healing breath. In through the nose and out through the heart. Breathe into the heart. Out through the heart. You know? And we talked about Mars. Jupiter is retrograde as well. Same thing with Saturn. Same thing with um, uh, Neptune, Uranus. I flipped those, man. It gets wide out there. Uh, Chiron is retrograde. Pluto is retrograde. Damn near all of it is retrograde passed from Jupiter on. And um, the crazy thing, y'all, is like from week to week, we're only going to see about one degree of a change between like Jupiter and Saturn. So not too much to say. I've talked it extensively in the last video, so I'm going to skip most of that. Go back to the last one if you want to see these energies a little more specifically. But one thing I'm called to talk about and Spirit directed me to say was that, you know, this week we will have Venus uh, square with Jupiter all week at a 90 degree angle. And that's another thing to really consider. So one thing about, I just, I'm jumping back to Virgo energy, the last of this Virgo energy. One thing I've realized in my experience is that it's way better to allow yourself to adapt and adjust because, you know, if you get too rigid in your plans, they can really kind of become self-defeating, self-restricting. And um, we're 15 episodes into Mars Day with Mark, into this astrology series. And I'm finding just the ways I structure my notes, the ways I do my videos, it's just me giving myself permission to destroy parts of my plans has given me the freedom to make my work better. So try not to be so set in the way that you think things need to be so you can really allow yourself room for adjustments and growth. And I think we all kind of know that, but it's worth a reminder every now and then. But uh, let's talk about Venus, Jupiter squares. Venus is our sense of love and pleasure and joy and Jupiter's our sense of meaning and reasoning and even you know the actualization of truths on some level Jupiter rules a very deep intuitive function you can correlate it to your right brain it's very feminine but um it's also very masculine in the way that it pushes energy out and it fills up space it's very interesting how Jupiter works but this archetype right here Venus and Jupiter connecting in a very powerful way with a square talks about a deep need for love meaningful love transcendental bliss hedonism the pursuit of pleasure i heard descending into apathy <laughs> descending into apathy carelessness freedom through love, freedom from love. There's a lot that comes with this, y'all. I'm, I'm speaking through my feet right now. This is wild. I'm speaking through my Jupiter Pisces. This is crazy. Like, letting go of the past hurts for a bright future. Yeah. <laughs> How cool. I hope this shit doesn't get a copyright strike because this music helps my heart. You got to keep in mind, it's Taurus versus uh, Leo. So a big thing I'm seeing is like, we were talking about all that Venus bullshit where there's that need to put yourself first before other people because there's clearly healing to do. And um, there, either way you look at these two cards, man, it's like pursuing this joy and this pleasure because we haven't dealt with that shit so it's like we either gonna deal with it and realize we don't have the emotional resilience to hold that vibration authentically 
or we're gonna really go party and drink and smoke and have sex to numb and escape this fucking void and this pain. Truly. This uh, Venus square Jupiter says, approaching some relationships kind of unconsciously at this point also. So be intentional. Make it make sense. And also this says that the Mars is imbalanced, basically. And, and that means uh, a, a need for sexual release, truly. So I encourage people to redirect that energy back into exercise. Mars Leo. Yeah, physical exercise. Physical exercise. And also self-love, man. I feel like damn near any time I make content, spirit wants me to tell y'all to fucking masturbate. And it's like, good God. I need, oh, they have that shit. I used to have one, actually. Um, I don't know where the fuck it went. But you'll know they have that easy button. I need to just get that damn nut button. So it's like, rather than having to say that shit again, I just hit that shit. And it would say, <laughs> it'd be like, release the fire. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's work. So I just hope y'all think of it that way as well. That some of y'all don't want love. You want sex is really just what I'm seeing with this energy. And if you want to look more archetypal about Venus, Jupiter, it's like you got to avoid self avoidance, self justifying beliefs that really just pander to your own needs or seeking the approval from other fucking people. It's like, so what I'm kind of seeing, dude, is like, you know, again, being unconsciously led towards a relationship. Some people might be in a partnership or trying to seek a partnership out that goes directly against what the fuck they believe right now. But because they want it so bad, they are gonna just fucking do it anyway, and they're gonna they're gonna reframe reality to make it seem like a good fucking thing. <laughs> Y'all better not do that shit. Y'all better stop. Y'all better not. If you're watching this video, hearing me right now, and this is talking, hitting your spirit. If you, bro, don't do it. Celibacy. Hold your fucking horses, man. Go fuck yourself, literally, and feel good about it. Like. No, <laughs> like Saturn Pisces said, no, understand the value of your sacrifices, the sanctity of your temple. These bitches don't deserve you. Think more highly of yourself, man. Don't just let a fucking idiot or a stranger or somebody that's just willing to give you the time of the day or just any low hanging fruit that you could easily get without trying. Bro, like, come on now. It's going to say like, we, we got to be an acting principle as well. And I hope I didn't get too personal for any of y'all, but at the same time, it's saying, like, this is Vesta in um, Cancer coming out, man. And I feel this in my natal chart. So, of course, I will have some subjective biases about this energy of, of sorts. But, hey, the fact that you as a subject are still listening. So, I'm, like, triangulating, trying to understand this whole process right now. But either way, uh, <laughs> it's going to... I just broke the fourth, the fifth, the sixth. All the walls have been broken, man. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm going to have to rebuild this damn house. But uh, <laughs> this is um, Mar Mars in Libra in Vesta Cancer energy. It's like protect the sanctity of your temple. Don't allow other people to... The word is literally penetrate you because of your emotional needs. That are unmet because sometimes you can provide them your own self i'm not trying to i'm sorry if my third house pluto ever has like triggered people just by the word choice i have man because i try to be as ethical and, and responsible as i can talking about more sensitive subjects but even just sometimes my own language man can be um but i just i try to speak from the heart too so you know my message can be cold sometimes, y'all, but I, my intention is always to speak love and life and truth into you guys, for real, for real, for real. But the big theme I was feeling with this one was like, there are a couple, there may be some things that's going to be hard to say no to, truly, because of how fun it might be to engage in it. But at the same time, it's like, you got to have to start redirecting that love, that value, that Venus energy back into self to be able to appreciate, you know, passing up those opportunities is what that feels like, dude, is that, you know, you got to take pride in your work. You got to be more 
intentional and make sure your mind is more focused on your own growth to the point where you start to realize the risk of letting things in. That's really what this is, man, is that, you know, your body is a temple and anything you invest in or interact with, you exchange with, and you just have to be intentional with that as well. It's rejection for self-preservation. And that would improve the way that you live and the way that you connect with the whole entire world. But a deep need to have empathy for yourself, 100% with that one right there. A deep need to have it. And so this is also crazy, guys. This one is crazy because I know I've been taking it into um, a lot of locations and energies and spaces. But I need y'all to understand in the transits right now, we have Saturn and Pisces. And we have Pluto and Capricorn. And these two energies are kind of mutually receptive for real. Um, or they're, they're connected. I don't want to say it's technically mutual reception, but it's like Saturn is ruling over Pluto right now is what I mean. And Saturn is the real world. Saturn is the reality we live in, restrictions and limits and how we build upon things. It's the energy of structure and order. And Pluto is the great revealer, it's the destroyer, it's transformation itself, it's the force of evolution, and that's primarily unconscious, right? So we've got these two planets, first of all, Saturn ruling over Pluto, but we've got them at a, in conjunction, at a sex, a semi-sextile, at about a 30 degree angle, and this is very confusing, man, because this is really reflecting power struggles in the world but these actually are more deeply entrenched in our own structure of our consciousness. So this shit is really about a need to grasp your own psychology even deeper with Saturn making a semi-sextile to Pluto in conjunction, whatever you want to call it. And that angle just says that, you know, there's a definite need to transform things from the fundamental core, but you have to rise above the the tendency to see the world as wrong in some way to be able to flip back inside and recognize how you might be creating this bullshit or how your misunderstanding of life or your limitations or your perspective might be contributing to this confusion as well and there may be things in the world that you want to change so i just want to Acknowledge that as well, but at the same time, nine times out of ten, you only can expect or really be receiving what you're projecting outwardly, you know? But do trust yourself. That is another thing that this talks about, is do trust yourself and be strong for the world. Be compassionate for the world. That's the whole point of Saturn going through Pisces is to say that, like, for the next couple of years... Saturn is directing our movie, our stage, so to speak, and all the planets will play out on this stage of objective reality. And Saturn Pisces is just gonna say, our collective responsibility is to stay up and be loving. Open your heart to empathy, open your heart to feelings, open your heart to compassion, open your heart to the spiritual world, open your heart to God. That's really what Saturn Pisces is about. It's a lot I could talk about, it's like, a lot of crazy shit happens in the world. So we need to be able to take care of ourselves, save ourselves, so we can save other people and then come together as one. Okay, but only in that order. Because I feel like if you look, this is what I'm seeing right here, man. If you look at the trials, tribulations, and hardships of the world and you are too wrapped up in the bullshit, you're going to get too nervous and then start to tell yourself you can't do anything when you are the change that the world needed. Watch out for that, man, because nothing gets done in desperation. So when you lose your mind, you lose your life. You need to slow the fuck down if you're hearing me and feeling me. That's what it is. And that really means overcoming that programming that told you you needed to be hyper sped up in the first place. That's deeply entrenched patterns in the collective is what I'm feeling with this one. I see Saturn and Pisces pulling energy out of the Virgo constellation or our experience of it because, damn, bless you, Mira. I'm just, um, 
I'm too, like, bro, my Mercury's in Pisces right now. Like, it's not, but it is. It's like, if we're on Earth and Saturn is transiting through Pisces, it's really going to bring us more gravity on that direction. And that's going to mean we're literally releasing energy through polarity from uh, Virgo. And a lot of us already knew that's how astrology worked, but that's something to think about is that, like, Virgo's the nervous, anxious bitch. No disrespect to the Virgos. I'm a Virgo rising, you know? So we, we really, we're shifting into the more peaceful, integrated Virgo energy. That's transcendental, Pisces. That's universal. All right? And I think on some level, it means just really choosing to fucking heal, man. To heal ourselves before we come in together with each other. Healing ourselves. Really diving into the source of why we feel fucking broken. Why do we feel hurt? Why do we feel disgusted with life and ourself and I, I i'm using these lang this language carefully again but just reminding you guys two weeks from now lilith and virgo so while we're switching from virgo sun to libra sun pretty damn soon we're going to be going from leo lilith to virgo lilith and that's a nine month transition and that's really the whole shadow theme of the year and it's going to be most of next year too so i'm like trying to i'm trying to Put y'all on game right quick, man. That you have to find the part of yourself you're the most disgusted with and love it anyway. That's really what I'm talking about, man. And let that off of your spirit. Realize that there's nothing inherently so bad that you would be flawed past the point of redemption in God's eyes. That's really what that message is about, man. And y'all need to hear that again. Trust that with your heart when I tell you. There's literally nothing you could do in this life that would make God not love you. That's the whole point of lo life, love, the gift that God gave you. God gave you this gift so you could appreciate it, bro. There's no fucking betrayal of life. We experience real betrayal in life, but it's an experience God wanted to have. Remember that. God still loves you through all that. So you got to stand up and be that main character and reframe if you've been through the betrayal from life you gotta you gotta reframe reality to see the gift you know there can be bad things done to good people and that's really just facts man there is malign force in the world so we just gotta rise above it and not become cruel because of it hey man if you stayed positive in a negative situation you won simply put all right so just remember god sees everything so i, I see a lot of people waiting on justice as well but I just want to remind y'all by the logic of this conversation, God saw everything. And you should find peace in that. You should find peace and not guilt in the fact that God saw everything. Even a lot of y'all who keep trying to fix yourself and you feel like you're broken beyond repair. It's like, do you think God didn't see you trying to fix yourself this whole fucking time? Think about that. Do you think God wasn't watching you fully invested in your self-improvement on an emotional level? Do you think God did not see you feel guilty? So it's like a lot of people need to forgive their damn selves, man. That's really what I'm seeing and start to celebrate ourselves, start to love ourselves because, you know, hurt people hurt people. And if your parents weren't conditioned to pour love into themselves, they damn sure aren't going to know how to teach you how to pour love into yourself. And there may be a long, sad family tree history of that as well, perhaps. Because we talked about the asteroids quite a bit on the last one. And I'm telling you all with Ceres, the mother goddess going through Scorpio, her dark night, it's really revealing depths of pain when it comes to being a woman and receiving energy from women you know women do put power over their children and on some level that's a good thing keep your children healthy and safe and, and protected and cared for but when you remove your child's will and ability to exist as they are the mom devours the child man as above, so below, man, and that's how it goes. That's the that's the transition that's going on in the collective is that we have to love our children better, man. That's a, I really just, I'm really like kind of too hurt to say that more emphatically, but yeah, like, dude, we have to love our children better, for real, because that's why I'm hurting so bad making this video, for real, you know? I'm not alone, and it's like we all, we all share this damn energy, man. So it's like, there's no, blame becomes useless at some point, but I'm just like here to tell y'all, man, it's a great celebration of life that we have heading forward, fall season or springtime season, wherever you happen to be. But um, we got to do better, man. 
we got to do better when it comes to our families, when it comes to loving each other and ourselves. And uh, what I'm seeing is like for some people, it's stepping up their nurturing. For some people, it's really giving a fuck about others, not being so damn selfish. For some people, it's finally standing up for themselves. I see there's so many ways this energy can play out, you know, and I want to call it as much of it as I can. There's a real need to just build security within self. And that means removing liabilities. That means employing severance appropriately. Yeah, and the cat's out the bag, man. Love yourself before you love anybody else. Love your purpose, love your mission, love the reason that you're here. And then nothing can deplete you. Let's let go of all that toxic shit. There's a lot of shit, man. And honestly, it's like, I think it's just a need to be still. If I could summarize this, man, there's a need to be still. Or to reinvest your passion right back into yourself. That's really what this also is about. Reinvest your passion, your desire, your love, and your sex back into yourself. Like all the fire energy, put it right back into yourself because that will not only empower you, but cleanse you at this time with Vesta and Cancer. I want you all to build a relationship with these planets because I think I've basically covered everything I have in my notes and most of what I wanted to say, quite honestly, and we're about the hour mark. So I just want to say that my intention is to reconcile paradox with love and truth. I do love you. Build a relationship with these planets because as above, so below, so within, so without, you have all of these planets flying through your body as a spirit and you can hop on them through your conscious awareness and feel their energies all right and there's good love in the universe coming in right now but you need to be aware of it to receive it all right and what's crazy about damn near everything being retro only a couple of the personal planets moving forward post shadow mars being in libra the natural desire is to point your energy outward with mars and libra point it back in from the principle of self-preservation, and I'm telling you, man, everything that you want to receive will come through flying on an asteroid in your own aura. See it, feel it, believe it, breathe it. Let every breath be a cleansing breath. I love y'all to death, and I love y'all to life for real. <laughs> That's how I feel. Hey, man, blessed be, blessed we. If you hit that like button for me, I'll greatly appreciate it. One for the algorithm. Leave me a comment. I appreciate it. Bye, y'all. I'll see y'all next time.